Hey guys, finally some machining at the workshop today. So we're working on the uh, Delta Rockwell 11 inch lathe. Um, uh, our goal or our project, well our first intended project was to uh, create this here piece. Uh, it's like a micrometer dial and you know you can set it just like any other micrometer dial it slides set it to zero and then do your drilling whatever you like to do uh, I had I, actually when I bought this lathe this tailstock was all messed up it was missing all this uh, I was able to find a, a yet a third Delta Rockwell lathe a couple months ago uh, and I bought it it was in a fire and I actually scrapped the lathe but I kept everything that was good the headstock the quick change uh, gearbox, the uh, the carriage or the apron, uh, lead screw, motor, a lot of things that were still good that really weren't damaged in the fire. Actually, the, probably the lathe could have been saved, but it was the uh, unhardened bed version. Uh, it looked like it was pretty much used and abused and uh, it, was, it was a disaster. So I kept what I could to use the parts off of it for uh, this lathe I wanted to fix up. And, uh, and I do have uh, my original Rockwell Delta or Delta Rockwell 11 inch. Uh, this is the longer bed. It's a, it's a nice lathe. Um, beefy, stocky lathe. I also have the shorter bed lathe. And uh, I'm going to just swing you over there real fast. As you can see, it's uh, right now it's kind of a shelf. Uh, got some extra attachments, taper attachment for it. Um, I took the rear end of this tailstock apart so I can take measurements and copy those pieces. I do have the hand wheel and I do have the, the dial. Everything is there. I just wanted to take it so I could copy everything. Uh, but anyway, in, in starting this project, I'm using the Delta 11 and uh, the lead screw. There's a, uh, a shear pin. It was kind of on its last leg. So uh, as I was turning and cutting, I didn't ram anything. I didn't, you know, crash the headstock or anything. But it just, it just let go, and it was kind of loosey, goosey for a while. You can see what's left of it. Not really sure what that material is. Um, I'm gonna guess it's a nail. I don't really think people that had this particular lathe took care of it. As you can see, it's. Uh, so anyway, I decided to pull it apart. This way I can uh, dunk the lead screw in a, uh, what do you call, uh, purple power. And, uh, and, and quite actually, I had to pull the apron off because uh, I couldn't get the lead screw without taking the apron out. There's a collar here. And somehow that collar wouldn't slide off and I wasn't about to start beating on it. Um, I didn't want to, you know, destroy the half nuts by, you know, doing any kind of uh, hammering while it was all attached. So... I took it apart. The, uh, the apron looks really nice. The, all the gears, it's, it's uh, surprisingly clean. Um, you know, there, it doesn't look like there's any slop anywhere. Very little tick there. You know, everything, all the gears are sweet. Nothing broken. Everything's nice and snug. Uh, one thing I did want to ask. These two brackets just kind of fell out when I took the thing off. If anybody knows what these brackets are for, they just seem like they were laying in, in, in the uh, inside of the apron. I'm going to do a little research myself, but you have, if you have an answer, uh, please let me know. So in the meantime, uh, coming back to this, this lathe, uh, since I have it this far apart, I wasn't really intending on doing anything to this lathe but using it until I get the uh, my other projects finished. Um, this lathe has the hardened bed and I was thinking that eventually I may turn this into uh, computer controlled. I would put some ball screws on it. Um, you know I, I obviously you guys know me you know I have some South Bend lathes. Um, this particular lathe uh, a lot of the pieces are squared off. The South Bend's you know it's it's kind of got that artsy look to it. Everything's curved over. Uh, and I feel like that particular day, there's going to be a lot of uh, 
things that are going to be hard to attach to make brackets for um, you know for the ball screws and and this and such. So I thought this might be a good candidate to turn into a uh, into like a CNC lathe. Just just you know for my own experience. Um, but that that's not here nor there. I just like so like I said I just wanted to use this until I got my other projects done. So uh, anyway, uh, just as my Saturday update, I also need to find some small, I guess these are Gitz Oilers. I'm going to look on McMaster and see if I can find some tiny ones. I might as well replace those. Might as well pull this off. Uh, might as well pull the uh, carriage off. Flip it over. Look at the condition. Uh, see if there's any dirt in there that needs to be cleaned. I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to start refurbishing it but I, I would li at least like to clean it um, see if I could find some new uh, way wipers they're, they're a little bit different as you can see uh, south bends might fit on the front ones but definitely not on the back ones so but uh so slow you know slowly as I'm as I'm using this this uh, lathe I'm, I'm trying to fix it as I go um, you know at least to try to get some projects done uh, I've been I've been purchasing uh, the AXA tool posts for it, and it's I have the shars. Uh, uh, actually, the tool I've been picking up these tool holders, but I have the shars tool post. I got to tell you, it's uh, I didn't you know this is the wedge style. I like it this way. And tell me, guys, if you have the same issue. But if I was to put a tool on this this way. Kind of have to move the lever. Kind of have to move this lever back. I got to kind of fight with it. The lever kind of hangs over. See, I could push it out this way, but then it hits. So I got to kind of mess mess with it all the time. I don't really like that. Um, I mean, for for the money, you can't go wrong. Uh, I think my goal. At some point, would be to have uh, the Loris tool posts and maybe use the Char holders. Um, you know, I, I have a, on my 13 inch, I have a, the BXA, and I do have the um, the Loris on my South Bend, and I have some Loris and and some Char's holders. Um, I mean, they seem nice. Eventually, you know, as one of the projects go, the shop. I would probably like to uh, make my own tool tool holders. I know a lot of guys have been doing it. Um, There's some really neat tool holders that could be made, but uh, but for now we're getting by with this because you know it seems like just starting back up with the workshop the uh, you know the expenses are you know I just keep finding myself buying a bunch of tooling, drill bits, cutters, you know. Um, not saying that they're crazy expensive, but uh, you know, gotta be careful about what you're spending your money on, especially since I don't have any jobs that I'm making money off of. This is kind of the hobby. Um, recently, I found a couple of uh, the South Bend collet holders, so I've been kind of using them. Obviously, so uh, I've got a couple of these as well. So um, at least I'm trying to organize myself. All right, guys, um, that's my update for today. Hope you guys are having a good week. Hope you're getting some stuff done in your shop. Uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Have a great day. Take care. Hey, make something cool.